In what has been a fairly dry year in gaming so far, what could be considered one of the year's biggest releases has finally dropped, and that game is Oddworld Soulstorm. Ironically, 2021's first big release of the year is actually a remake of a game from 1998, however, Soulstorm isn't your average remake. It is in fact a reimagining of Abe's Exodus that is so far removed from the original that it's pretty much its own game. Now, this could be a good or bad thing depending on who you ask, but if you ask me, this is a significant step forward for the series. As a fan of the series, I've been looking forward to Soulstorm's release ever since the first pieces of concept art were teased in 2017. And not only has this game been 5 years in the making, but this is the first original Oddworld game in 15 years. So naturally I had to buy this game day one to show my support for the series, and to play this new entry for myself. But it begs the question, is Soulstorm being a complete reworking of Exodus an improvement of the original, or a disappointing remake of a classic? Well, watch this review to find out. Alright, let's get the most obvious aspect out of the way first. This game looks gorgeous. Obviously with the 20 plus years of technological advancement since the release of Exodus, this game is going to massively improve upon the visuals of the original. But Soulstorm does it in a way that makes it almost feel like a AAA title. Environments and character models have been greatly improved from new and tasty, and the cutscenes are so wonderfully rendered that it's like watching a high production animated film. Now new and tasty has some nice background scenery and dynamic camera work, but Soulstorm puts new and tasty to shame in this regard. Levels are less like 2D planes and feature more curved and diverging pathways that make the world feel less flat. With the enhanced processing power of current gen hardware, entire sections of the level are now viewable in the background and players can even scope out the next area to prepare themselves for the challenges ahead. This detail not only allows for some strategic planning, but makes these sections feel more cohesive and part of a larger world and environment. It's not quite like the segmented room-like nature of New and Tasty. Sound design is also great in this game. Small details like hearing accompanying trains whirring past you on the train hijack level really adds to the atmosphere It makes you feel like you're on a high-speed action-packed train ride. Character voice lines are also as charming and humorous as ever for the series. There are even some voice cameos from various internet personalities in the form of in-game radio broadcasts that can be heard throughout various points of the game. Although, I found some of them to be occasionally distracting and took me out of the experience. Hideakers' lines were fine and fit given his long-time history with the series. It also helped that he at least attempted to do an Oddworld-styled voice when reading his lines. But Jim Sterling and Greg Miller's lines felt out of place in the game to me. When I listened to them, they didn't sound like inhabitants of Oddworld, but Greg Miller and Jim Sterling. I was also annoyed by the fact that Greg Miller kept mispronouncing Madokans as Mudokans. I guess this could have been an intentional voice direction to make his character sound more insensitive towards the Madokans, but it seemed more like he just didn't know how to pronounce the name. At its most basic elements, the story is largely the same as the game it's based on. Abe must travel to facilities such as Necro Mines and Soulstorm Brewery to liberate his fellow Madokans from slavery. However, the way in which the story is told and presented is completely different from how it's presented in Exodus. Many of the plot details have been altered or expanded upon to offer a unique retelling of this story. The tone is also starkly different to the original, feeling a lot less comedic and slapstick at times, and more of a serious grim tale of an unlikely hero, overthrowing evil corporations and liberating his people. Some may not be a big fan of this tone shift, but I think this is something that the series really needed. I mean, the Oddworld games since their inception have had these dark and broad themes about corporate slavery and environmentalism, but the humorous tone always kept that back for me. Now, with that aspect removed, this tale comes through more clearly, and you really feel the desperation that Abe and his followers feel in trying to take down Soulstorm Brewery. However, the humor of the series isn't completely lost. You still have humorous moments during gameplay in the form of a dock and dialogue and death animations. Gameplay at its core is very similar to New and Tasty, however Soulstorm offers new mechanics that build upon the tried and true formula and, in the process, create a brand new Oddworld experience. Firstly, Abe can now double jump. What sounds like a mundane addition that is a gameplay standard for many platforming games is a huge evolution for this series. A simple double jump helps make platforming more dynamic and faster paced. Now players can correct imprecise jumps on the fly, and no longer have to slowly climb up from one ledge to the next just to clear a tall structure. This also expands upon the amount of platforming depth and challenges possible in the game. 
Another big feature is the looting and crafting system. What sounds like a cumbersome mainstream addition actually proves to be a useful mechanic that allows for a fair amount of variety in puzzle solving and enemy dispatchment. You can even give crafted items to your followers so they can better aid you in combat. This game is also action packed this time around, at times feeling less like a cinematic puzzle platformer and more like a straight up action side scroller. GameSpeak has been streamlined in this entry as now all commands can be made by pressing or holding down a direction on the d-pad. This makes for a quicker and less tedious method of commanding your Madokan followers. The follower AI seems to be improved from new and tasty as well, as followers are more capable of following Abe's movements accurately. The game is broken up into levels, and each level takes about an hour to complete, at least on a first time playthrough, so you'll easily get a good 15 to 20 hours out of this experience. You can replay levels at any time to improve your Quarma, or the amount of medals you earn. Yes, this game offers medals, which are essentially level based challenges to task you with things such as looting a certain amount of lockers, apprehending a certain amount of slags, so on and so forth. These medals, along with the new level select system, give the game a higher and more accessible replay value than previous entries. Not that Oddworld games of the past weren't replayable per se, but you couldn't exactly load up your favorite level like you can in Soulstorm. And if you didn't collect enough Wudakins by the end of the game to get the good ending, you were pretty much screwed. Now with this new level select system, players have a better chance of getting the good ending even on a first time playthrough. There's also a decent amount of enemy variety this time around in Soulstorm. While the classic flying slags make a return, heavy slags and shock baton slags are also introduced in the remake. This adds a decent sense of variety, as different slags can have different weapons to play around with. Overall, Soulstorm is a game that not only stays true to the control schemes introduced in New and Tasty, but greatly improves upon them with its own mechanics. Even though this is a fantastic remake of Exodus, it isn't without its faults. I'll begin with the faults that directly affect the game, and then go into some more arbitrary criticisms. Firstly, there is no quick save feature in this game. Yeah, despite being a staple of the series since Exodus, the same game this one is based on, you cannot save whenever you like. This, in turn, makes the game a bit more difficult than it needs to be. Now, instead of quick saving in between sections to prevent yourself from replaying them, you have to rely solely on hitting the game's checkpoints. Which, to be fair, are for the most part reasonably placed, but they still require you to run back and forth between the checkpoints to save progress due to their design. I'm really not sure why this feature was removed, but hopefully it can be retroactively patched into the game later. If the intent was to make this one of the hardest Oddworld games, then they certainly accomplished this. The new inventory system, while great, can get a little clunky at times. The more items you craft on level, the more cluttered your weapon wheel gets. This occasionally causes you to select an item you didn't mean to and use it by accident. Not a huge issue, but a minor nuisance. I also encountered a pretty bad game design fall in a train hijack level. Basically, there's a secret area at the end of the level that you can only escape from if you use the flying slig to flip a switch prior to going down there. Otherwise, if you go down there without flipping the switch, you're forced to restart the entire level. This is a fairly bad oversight in my opinion that can punish first time players. Hopefully Oddworld inhabitants can patch a solution to this design issue. But in the meantime, just remember to flip this lever before you attempt this secret area. It'll make your life a lot easier in the long run. Now that all the major criticism is out of the way, let's get into some more minute criticisms and comparisons. This game's launch is pretty buggy. Granted, most of the bugs aren't game breaking and you can still play and beat the game just fine in spite of them. But they can occasionally be annoying and cause you to restart sections. So for that simple reason, I recommend waiting to buy this game at a later date. Maybe in a couple of months when the majority of the bugs have been patched out and it goes on sale. Which, I mean, if you didn't buy this game within the first week of launch is probably what you were going to do anyways, but I'm just reassuring your decision to wait. Now let's go over what's missing from Exist and I'm disappointed it didn't make a return in this remake. As mentioned before, GameSpeak has been streamlined, so this unfortunately means that the amount of commands you can give your followers has been limited. You can't command your followers to do things such as work, so if they're spotted by a slig, there's no way to prevent them from being shot on sight. If Oddworld Inhabitants wants to use a D-pad for game speed going forward, perhaps they could use the select button as a means of cycling between various commands, as the button literally does nothing in Soulstorm. Just a suggestion. Blind Madokans and more importantly, emotions have been removed from this game as well. Instead of being angry, depressed, or wired, Madokans will either be happy you're rescuing them or mildly annoyed at having to wait. And occasionally you'll come across some sick Mudokans that you have to heal, but they're honestly pretty rare in most levels. 
Removing these emotions and ailments takes away some of the human aspect these Mudokans have and makes them more like mindless sheep. I guess this wasn't included either because of mechanical constraints or not wanting to individually manage Mudokans, but I hope they can somehow include it in the next game. Because I don't remember these emotional Mudokans ever being that annoying to deal with. The minecart does make a cameo of sorts in this remake, but unfortunately you cannot drive it this time around. Which is a shame, because driving along the cave walls and ceilings with these minecarts was a fun aspect of Exodus, and I think they definitely could have used them for some interesting gameplay segments in Soulstorm. The amount of enemies you can possess has also been greatly reduced in this remake. In the original, you could possess Paramites, Scrabs, and even the various Glucken antagonists of the game. But in Soulstorm, Scrabs and Paramites are missing, and at no point can you possess any of the Glucken CEOs. This is a shame, because I really liked possessing the Glockens in the original and forcing them to sabotage themselves. It was like a dark poetic sense of justice. And speaking of possession, you can no longer possess your own farts and use them as a weapon. This is disappointing, but makes sense given the design of the game and the bruised properties in the story. And that's all I'm going to say on that because I don't want to get into spoilers. There are some other aspects that are missing or changed from Exodus, but these are the ones that stuck out in my mind that I missed in Soulstorm. Overall, despite a few of my transgressions, this is a wonderful remake of a classic game. While it may not completely replace the original for some, it is a worthwhile experience and a fantastic work of art. For a game with so much writing on it, it did not disappoint. I give this game a rating of 9 out of 10. It is definitely one of, if not the best game in the series to date. And I'm really eager to see how Oddworld Inhabitants will remake Munch's Odyssey, especially since many fans would agree that it is probably the weakest of the Oddworld games. So I'm really curious to see how they improve upon that game and where the series goes from here. Whether or not you agree with the series tonal shift, this is likely a new direction of the franchise going forward. So it's best to get on the Soulstorm train now, or else you'll be left behind. Stay Odd Inhabitants.